Grab your pen, your notebook, your Bible. You can be seated with your sweet smart self as we get into the word of his grace. Mm -mm -mm. Hallelujah. All right, we've been examining being filled with the spirit. Being filled with the spirit. We have been examining what it means to be filled with the spirit. Ephesians chapter 5 verse 18 and 19. And be not drunk with wine wherein is excess. But be filled with the Spirit speaking. Be filled with the Spirit speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. This is an instruction, not an advice. Not just a story in the Bible. It's an instruction in the Bible. Be filled with the Spirit. Please observe. Be filled with the Spirit. The spirit, when you have T-H-E, which is they in the Bible, that is a specific person that must be identified quickly. Because the word spirit is a word in the Bible that can be used for different things. For example, angels are spirits. The book of Hebrews chapter 1 verse 7 tells us that angels are spirits. In verse 13 and 14 it says they are ministering spirits. So angels are called spirits. In John chapter 4 verse 24, God is a spirit. See that? John 4 24. God is a spirit. So obviously, the word spirit deals with several things. So when you hear, be filled with the spirit, you have to ask, which spirit is he talking about? Which spirit is he talking about? We have said that God has given his spirit to us. That you cannot be a Christian without the spirit of God. You cannot be born again without the spirit of God. We've established that. So let's look at the two prophecies we've been looking at again. In Joel chapter 2 verse 28 and Ezekiel 36. Please pay attention. The two prophetic scriptures that talks about God giving his spirit. Look at me everybody. God giving his spirit. We are not saying... That the spirit of God began to function on earth on the day of Pentecost. Or after the day of Pentecost. That's not what we're saying. What we're saying is that God did not give his spirit until Pentecost. And you need to understand what it means by give in that context. He doesn't mean the spirit wasn't working on the earth. After all, in Genesis chapter 1 verse 3, we see that the spirit of God moved upon the face of the deep. In Genesis chapter 1 verse 3. So when we say God gave his spirit, always read scriptures in context. What does it mean to read scriptures in context? You must look at the pretext and the posttext to be able to understand context. Pretext means the scriptures before that particular verse. Posttext means the verses after that verse to be able to understand the context of that discourse. Look at Ezekiel 36, but before we read, you need to understand the prophecy of the giving of the spirit. When we say God gave his spirit. God didn't give his spirit in the Old Testament. God gave his spirit to the Old Testament prophets, priests and kings. But never gave his spirit to them the way he gave his spirit to us. The way God gave his spirit to the Old Testament prophets is different. From the way he gave his spirit to us. So let's examine scriptures. Ezekiel 36 verse 24. Ezekiel 36 verse 24. Ezekiel 36 verse number 24. For I will take you from among the hidden and gather you out of all countries and will bring you into your own land. 25. Then will I sprinkle clean water upon you and you shall be clean from all your filthiness. And from all your idols will I cleanse you. 26. A new heart also will I give you. And a new spirit will I put within you. And I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh. And I will give you a heart of flesh. The word heart is your life. Or what we mean the core. Your core. The very core of your being. So when he says I will give you a new heart. What he was saying is, I will make you a new person. I will make you a brand new person that never existed before. I will give you a new heart. Look at verse 27 
of that same Ezekiel 36 verse 27. And I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes. And you shall keep my judgments and do them. I will put my spirit within. If you observe in that reading that we read, the word within occurred five times. I will put my spirit within. So the emphasis of this prophecy is within and cause you to walk in my statutes. I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes. That is, I am going to give you my spirit as your nature. So whatever this prophecy is for, will have the same nature or whosoever this prophecy is for, will have the same nature as God. The same nature as God. I will give you my spirit and my spirit will become your nature. I will give you my spirit and my spirit will become your nature. Talking about the new birth. The only way you can have someone's spirit is to have his nature. And to have his nature, you have to be born by him. To have his nature, you have to be born by him. In other words... You will have his DNA or you will have his life. So that's what he means by my spirit. Now look at Joel. Let's see the prophecy of Joel chapter 2 verse 28. Joel or Joel chapter 2 verse 28. And it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams. Your young men shall see vision. I will pour out. That word pour out means I will empty out. I will empty out my spirit upon all flesh. I will empty my spirit or I will pour out upon. Two things here. Ezekiel says my spirit will be within. Joel says my spirit will be upon. But both of them refers to my spirit. Both within and upon is my spirit. One spirit, not two spirits. In other words, the one that takes precedence will be within. Because Jesus spoke most of the times concerning the spirit within. Look at John chapter 14, 15 and 16. All of them speaks about the spirit within. John chapter 14, chapter 15, chapter 16. All of them speaks of the spirit within. Look at John chapter 14 verse 16. Let's look at a practical example. John chapter 14 verse number 16 and i will pray the father and he shall give you another comforter that he may abide with you forever abide with you for how long forever look at the next verse 17 even the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it seeth him not neither knoweth him but you know him for he dwelleth with you and shall be in you he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. And he will dwell with you for how long? Forever. For you to know what it means, it was never given to anybody in the scriptures that promise. That promise was never fulfilled in the Old Testament. But given to people who are saved by the blood. The only way you can partake of that promise that we just read in John 14... You have to be saved by Jesus' blood. So that way he will live in you. He will make you his abode. But he said he is already with you. He said he shall be, he is with you and shall be in you. Okay? With you. What did he mean by he is already with you now but shall be in you? Because Jesus was anointed of the spirit and jesus with them was the spirit with them in luke chapter 4 verse 18 the spirit of the lord god is upon me for he has anointed me so the spirit was on jesus acts 10 38 peter said how god anointed jesus of nazareth with the Holy Ghost and power who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil for God was with him. So the spirit was on Jesus. Jesus was with them. By implication, the spirit was with them. He said, but the spirit with you shall be 
in you which is a promise that was not yet fulfilled as at then are we still in the building here all right so the spirit is with you but very shortly the spirit shall be in you so jesus already has the holy ghost but he said the holy spirit is with them just like in the old covenant he was on the prophets the priests, and the kings and he was also in the tabernacle but he says now he is going to be in you which is a new reality a new reality that never existed before the spirit in in other words the spirit of god in the old covenant has become the nature of the new covenant believer you didn't hear that the spirit of god in the old covenant has become the nature of the new covenant believer the spirit of god in the old covenant has become the nature of the new covenant believer so that spirit within you will now come upon you within you will now come upon upon has to do with ministry we are made of the substance of ministry you didn't hear that we are made every born again child of god is made of the substance of ministry that is we don't receive ministry outside the substance of salvation we don't receive ministry outside the substance of salvation that means the same substance that got us born again becomes our ministry the same substance that got us born again now becomes our ministry so every believer is already is already a potential minister that is we don't receive salvation and we don't receive ministry outside the substance of salvation both ministry and the empowerment for ministry to serve others to be a blessing to our world are received together in salvation let me repeat both ministry and the empowerment for ministry to serve others to be a blessing to our world to change lives we received both in salvation see that because the spirit within is the spirit upon the spirit within is the spirit upon functioning differently but the spirit within is the same upon within functions differently upon functions differently but the same spirit look at john 3 30 pay attention john chapter 3 verse number 30 he must increase but i must decrease 31 he that cometh from above is above all he that is of the earth is earthly and speaketh of the earth he that cometh from heaven is above all 32 to 34 we're going to 34 and what he had seen and heard that he testified and no man received his testimony he that had received his testimony has said to his seal that god is true for he whom god has sent speaketh the words of god for god giveth not the spirit by measure unto him is not in the original for god giveth not the spirit by measure or the spirit by measure unto him is not in the original so you can expunge it now <clears throat> god gives not the spirit by measure you know i've had people quote this verse about jesus but really that verse is not talking about jesus because the next verse says look at the next verse the next verse verse 35 the father loved the son and had given all things into his hand the father loved the son so now the next verse talked about many things jesus will do after his resurrection okay just like matthew 3 11 matthew 3 11 and luke chapter 3 when he said he that comes after me will baptize with the holy ghost and fire obviously that will only happen when he is raised from the dead so jesus said in acts 1 5 to confirm it look at acts chapter 1 verse 5 
I indeed, for John truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. Not many days hence. That wasn't going to happen until Jesus rises from the dead. Jesus said, God gives not the spirit by measure. And I've heard people talk about measures of the spirit. Have you heard that teaching before? Measures of the spirit. That when you're born again, you have a measure of the spirit. When you're filled with the Holy Ghost, you have double portion of the spirit. Okay, that's total, that's gibberish. That's not Bible teaching. John 3, 35 John 3, 35, pay attention. The father loved the son and had given all things into his hand. When did this happen? When did the father give all things into the hands of the son? Huh? When he rose from the dead. So that means the context of this scripture is post-resurrection. The context. Okay? Because the father gave to the son all things after the son rose from the dead. Okay? Look at verse 35 and 36 of that. I mean verse 36 of that same John chapter 3. He that believeth on the son hath everlasting life. And he that believeth not the son shall not see life. But the wrath of God abideth in him. When do you believe in the son? Before resurrection or after? After resurrection. John 3 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth. So you will only believe in the son after he rose from the dead. See, when it comes to Bible interpretation, you have to read other portions to understand what he's saying. So look at John chapter 3, verse 14, and let's read again. John 3 14. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of God, man be lifted up. 15. That whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life. So he was referring to when Jesus will be killed and become an offering for sin. Whoever believes in him will have eternal life. Please pay attention. Jesus giving, didn't give life to anybody till after he rose from the dead. Life will only be offered upon his resurrection. All right? So in verse 34, where we read, give it not the spirit by measure. I mean, give it the spirit, you know, give it not the spirit by measure. Then 35, God has given him all things. 36, you will believe in him, will refer to the post-resurrection realities of Jesus. The post-resurrection realities of Jesus. The point here is, God does not give. The word give means to be quick to, to be quick to, to offer. Not to collect. God does not give the spirit by measure. God does not offer the spirit in portions. God does not offer the Holy Spirit in portions. Take portion one. Portion two. Portion three. Portion ten. So you keep collecting. No. The spirit is not given by measure. Are we in the building? There is no small Holy Spirit and plenty Holy Spirit. There is no inferior Holy Spirit and superior Holy Spirit. God does not give the Spirit by measure. There is no female Holy Spirit and male Holy Spirit. God does not give the Spirit by measure. If you don't have the Spirit, you don't have the Spirit. And if you have the Spirit, you have the Spirit. Because upon resurrection, God gave his spirit without measure. That's why Joel's prophecy said, he will empty his spirit upon. Did you remember I said that in the beginning? I will pour out my spirit means I will empty my spirit upon. So once you have the spirit, you have all of the spirit. It's not in measures. There is no big measure or small measure. He gives the spirit without measure. I will pour, I will empty my spirit upon all flesh. Ezekiel said, I will put my spirit within you. 
Look at John 7, 37. Please pay attention. John chapter 7, verse number 37. <clears throat> Are you still in the building? In the last day, that great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried, saying, If any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. Next verse. He that believeth on me, as the scripture hath said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. Next verse. But this spake he of the spirit, which they that believe on him should receive. I'd like you to underline the word, this spake he of the, the spirit. Underline the spirit. Underline the spirit or make a note. The spirit. Ephesians 5.18 says, Be filled with the spirit. The spirit. This speck he of the spirit. Be filled with the spirit. John 3.34 God gives not the spirit. The spirit. So, this is all the spirit. Same thing. The spirit. Now go back to John 7.39. <clears throat> This spake he of the spirit, which they that believe on him should receive. For the Holy Ghost was not yet given because that Jesus was not yet glorified. Alright? John 3.16 says, He that believeth in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life or eternal life. Eternal means forever. And he says, he that believe will have the spirit. How long will the spirit be with you? Forever. What is eternal life? Forever. So the spirit will be in you for how long? Forever. And you have eternal life, which means what? Forever. All right? Eternal life forever. So, eternal life is the spirit of God within. Eternal life is the spirit of God within. Remember, the spirit of God is your nature. The spirit of God is your nature. So when you say eternal life is a concept of describing that the spirit has become our nature. Eternal life is a concept that describes that the spirit of God has become our nature. I like to hear you shout, I have eternal life. So eternal life is the spirit within. Or eternal life is a description of the giving of the spirit within us. Eternal life is a description of the giving of the spirit within us because the spirit is life the spirit of god is the life of god so the life that came to us from god is his spirit the life that came to us from god is his spirit hallelujah and that spirit is in us for how long? Forever. So people talk about losing salvation. I've not understood what we're teaching right now. In John 7 39, put it up again. But this spake he of the spirit which they that believe on him should receive. For the Holy Ghost was not yet given because that Jesus was not yet glorified. So Jesus had to be glorified before the spirit will be given. So what Jesus said here is the spirit will be given but the spirit right now has not been given. But the spirit is upon me and because I am with you the spirit is with you. But when I am glorified the spirit with you will be in you. Are we on the same page? When I am glorified, the spirit on me now will become your nature. Satayada. 
That means what you see me do because the spirit is on me. When I'm glorified, that will become your ability. That will be inherent in you as your nature. So healing the sick will not be an effort. It will be natural. Operating miracles will not be by struggle. It will be inside your DNA. Miracles will be part of your lifestyle. What they did in the Old Testament by the Spirit, that Spirit will now become your nature, your configuration, your composition. And that will be your nature forever. Uh, these realities can get a man running, man. I tell you, I feel like, oh, Jagala, the brother. Are you still in the building now? Hmm. Cowboy and again. Now, there were statements Jesus made and John made that were statements of the future. They are what we call post-resurrection events of the Bible. Because John knew these scriptures were for after resurrection. You know, John wrote the book of John after Jesus has risen from the dead. Okay, right. So listen carefully. God will not give his spirit God will not pour his spirit. God will not put his spirit within you until after the resurrection. God will not give his spirit. He will not pour out his spirit. He will not put his spirit within you until after resurrection because these are post-resurrection realities. So Jesus in John 14, 16 and 17, he said the Holy Spirit will abide in you forever. In John 16 verse 7. Put it up for me. John chapter 16 verse 7. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him to you. You know, uh, Dr. Gabriel, I don't know if you've heard this. He used to be very common around the Pentecostal circles. Even till now, there are preachers who still talk about it. That the Old Testament is the dispensation of the Father. The Gospels are the dispensation of the Son. And the Epistles are the dispensation of the Spirit. Have you had such things? Okay. <laughs> it's total rubbish. That's not what Jesus is saying. In fact, if you read Jesus well, he said he himself, Jesus, will come to you. He said, I. Uh, I will. Oh, Jesus. Give me John 14, 20. Ay, 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 ay. At that day you shall know that I am in my father. And you are in me. And I in you. Give me verse, verse, that's chapter 14, verse 16 and 17 again. And I will pray the Father and he shall give you another, another comforter. That he may abide with you forever. Please pay attention. Even the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive. Because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him. But you know him. For he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. Next verse. I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. The spirit coming to you is me coming to you. Did you see that? I will not leave you comfortless. Another comforter Another comforter, I will come. Give me again, that's John chapter 14, verse 17 and 18. Please follow this again. Even the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him. But you know him, 
For he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. Keep that somewhere. Keep that thought somewhere. So it's not a replacement theory. Rather, it's fulfillment of the plan. It's not a replacement. It's a fulfillment of the plan. Every time we saw the son, we saw the father. And when the son left, he came back in the spirit. Every time we saw the son, we saw the father. And when the son left, he came back in the spirit. The Godhead comes back to us in the spirit. It's not a replacement theory. Every time Jesus talked in John 14, 15, 16, I will go, he was referring to going to the father. John 14, 1, 2, 3. I go to prepare a place. If I go, I come. I go to prepare a place. That where I am, there you may be also. In my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go, I come. That where I am, you may be. I go, I come. That where I am, you may be. He's talking about the right hand of the father. So Jesus goes to the father. That going to the father means death, burial, resurrection. And ascension to God. In John 17, remember, Mary Magdalene saw Jesus after resurrection. And she held him and Jesus said, hold me not back. I've not yet gone to my father. Go, go. I've not yet gone. I go. I've not yet gone. So that going was ascension after resurrection. I've not yet gone to my father, your father, my God, your God. That going was ascension post-resurrection. I go to my father. So he goes to the father to present himself on our behalf. That's where you have the fullness of redemption. So based on that, Jesus now sits at the right hand of the father as a regent. As a regent, one whom the father has given all things to. And based on that, he now can give the spirit to us. Before he rose, he was given the spirit. Now he has risen and is the regent. He now gives the spirit to us. Now, that's what he meant. That if I am glorified, it's only when you can receive my gift. If I am not glorified, you cannot receive my spirit. Now please listen carefully. Think along with me. Until I ascend, Jesus said, to the right hand of the Father, and I pay for your sins. And I make you eternally forgiven. You cannot have the spirit without measure. You cannot have the spirit forever. So he says, until I go, he, the spirit, cannot come unto you. That is, he has to come on a legal basis. The spirit has to come on a validated platform. That is the platform of Jesus' resurrection from the dead. An ascension to the father to pay for sins forever are you in the building then whatever will be given based on Jesus' sacrifice will be forever question why is it that whatever will be given based on Jesus' sacrifice will be forever huh huh why is it that whatever will be given based on Jesus' sacrifice will be forever. Because the sacrifice is forever. What was the promise? I will give you another comforter who will abide with you. So if that comforter will come, there must be legal basis that will enable that comforter because that comforter cannot come on temporal grounds. He has already told you that the only platform on which that comforter will come 
will be if he will be in you forever. So there must be a sacrifice that pays for your sin forever that qualifies you to house the Holy Ghost forever. Is it clear here? The Spirit of God will not live in you for some time. He will live in you forever because he is going to live in you not on the basis of you but on the basis of the forever sacrifice. Oh, I, I'm feeling this. Thing. Thank you, Father. Oh, Shakayada. Oh, Shakayada. So, the indwelling of the Spirit is based on the sacrifice of Jesus. On the basis that Jesus sanctified us and paid for sins forever is the reason why the spirit is given forever. Just like righteousness is forever. Salvation is forever. Holiness is forever given to the believer. Just like everything that came with Jesus is given forever. Why? Because the basis on which everything is given is a forever basis. The sacrificial work of Christ is forever. So the forgiveness of sin is forever. You are not righteous until you behave bad. Your righteous is forever based on the sacrificial work of Christ. If it's getting clear, say I hear you. It's forever. It's a forever something. You understand? Yes. It's a forever something. That's Nigerian slang. It's a forever thing. It, it, it's, it's not a conditional thing. No. It's a forever thing. And the basis for the spirit being forever is not your behavior. The basis for the spirit staying in you forever is not your morality. Morality is good, but that's not the basis. The basis for the Spirit staying in you forever is not how powerful you pray. The basis for the Spirit staying in you forever is the forever sacrifice that has forever forgiven your sins and forever sanctified you and forever made you righteous. Is it clear tonight? It's a forever thing. <laughs> He has to go for the spirit to be given. He has to be glorified. So Jesus went to the father and sat at the right hand of God where he gives the spirit. You know I love brother Peter. The way brother Peter gave us the summation of this account on the day of Pentecost. Says the same thing. Look at how Peter puts it in Acts chapter 2 verse 32. Acts chapter 2 verse 32. Now let me give you a little background before 32 because of time. So he, Peter begins, begins to discuss. He says that, that God by his predetermined counsel, gave Jesus to die. It was a plan. And Jesus went to hell. But God raised him from the dead. That's the background. Now look at verse 32 of Acts 2. This Jesus hath God raised up. Whereof we are all, that is them Peter. They are all witnesses. Because they, were, they saw it. Next verse. Therefore, glory to God, being by the right hand of God exalted and having received of the Father the promise of the Holy Ghost, he had shed forth this, which you now see and hear. Whenever people are filled with the Spirit, there is something to see and something to hear. Yes, yeah, sight and sounds of the Spirit. You can't be full of the spirit and there are no sights and sounds. No. There will always be something to see and something to hear. Which you now see and hear or which you now hear and see. So when he was exalted, he received of the father the promise of the Holy Ghost. So he had to be exalted first before he offered the Holy Ghost to us. The Father gave him all things. And because the Father gave him all things, he now is the one that gives to us. Okay? Now, look at verse 33 and 34 of Acts chapter 2. 
Therefore, being by the right hand of God exalted, and having received of the Father the promise of the Holy Ghost, he has shed for this, which you now see and hear. For David is not ascended into the heavens, but he saith himself, the Lord saith unto my Lord, sit thou on my right hand. So, the giving of the Spirit was based on the authority that Jesus possessed when he died and rose again when he died and rose again so the giving of the spirit is on the platform of the forgiveness of sins the giving of the spirit is on the platform of the forgiveness of sins that is why you discover after reading about the forgiveness of sins you will read about the indwelling of the spirit because the indwelling of the spirit is possible because of the forgiveness of sins. The blood of Jesus was first of all shed before the spirit was given. So where the blood flows, the spirit goes. Where the blood flows, the spirit goes. Please stay with me. So the blood has been shed, therefore the spirit is given. So every believer has the Holy Ghost on a legitimate basis. Every believer, every child of God. It's not a prayer point. The Holy Spirit is the gift of Jesus and a gift of Jesus based on his sacrifice. That is the legal platform on which you receive the Holy Spirit. It's not a feeling something. You know feeling something. Shh. Yeah, I'm feeling it like cold. It's, it's flowing in my body like ice block. You may be having malaria. It's not a feeling something. The spirit is given on the basis of the sacrificial work. Eternal. Glory to God. So the Holy Spirit is the seal of redemption. The seal of redemption. The word seal, look at it, Ephesians 1 13. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 13. In whom you also trusted, after that you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation. In whom also, after that you believed, you were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. Most of the times, these translations, eh, they limit our understanding by their expressions. You will see what I mean now. You will see what I mean. In the original, it doesn't say after you believe. Uh -uh. Look at it. That verse 13, see what I'm trying to show you. In whom, also you also, in whom you also trusted, after that you had the word of faith, of truth, the gospel of your, of your salvation, in whom also after, after you believed, you were sealed. That there's an injustice in that translation in that place. After you believe and you were sealed. In the original, it doesn't say after you believe because it happened concurrently. So what it says in the original is as you believed, you were sealed. Or for believing, you were sealed. That's the original. For believing. It's not like you believe, then after some time the Holy Ghost came. No. At that instance of believing, bam, you were sealed with the Holy Spirit. The word sealed is a word that has to do with approval. Approval or a seal of ownership. A seal of ownership. Look at verse 14. Ephesians 1.14 Which is the earnest of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession unto the praise of his glory. That is, that is to say, when the Spirit of God was given to you, you were sealed, signed, and delivered. That's a legal term. You were sealed, signed, and delivered. You were sealed with the Spirit. That's the proof of ownership that God owns you. You were sealed by, with the Spirit of God is a proof or God's proof of ownership. Or a proof of permanence. That is, the Holy Spirit, which is forever, 
is a proof of God's ownership of you forever. Just like, you know, if somebody says, this is my father, and you check his DNA and they don't agree, he cannot be his father. When the believers say, God is my father, what you are actually saying is, we share the same DNA. His spirit is my nature. If you check both of us, our DNA is the same. That's the seal of the Holy Ghost. That is the Holy Spirit is like DNA to us. Life from God to us. That is the proof that we are of God is the Holy Spirit. Look at Romans 8, 9 and 10. Mm -mm. Romans 8, 9. Are you enjoying this at all? Romans 8, 9 and, 10, 9 and 10. But you are not in the flesh but in the spirit. If so be that the spirit of God dwell in you now. If any man have not the spirit of Christ, he is not of his. Because the spirit of Christ is the DNA. And if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin. But the spirit, life. So the life of the believer is the spirit. Why? Because of righteousness. The forgiveness of sins makes the spirit of God your life. The spirit is life. God's spirit is my life. Because of righteousness. Because of Jesus' sacrifice for sin. The spirit is life to me. Look at 2 Corinthians 5.5. 5. Mm -mm. Now he that hath wrought us. For the self same thing is God. Who also had given unto us. The earnest of the spirit. The earnest means the guarantee. The guarantee. Guarantee simply means that you will surely get something. The earnest. Ephesians 1.14. Put it up. Ephesians. Which is the earnest of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession. Of the purchased possession until the redemption is the earnest, the seal, the guarantee. Ephesians 4 30. Ephesians, and grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby you are sealed unto the day of redemption. That day of redemption is what we call the rapture. Rapture means resurrection from the dead. That's the meaning of rapture. The resurrection from the dead of the believer. According to Romans 8, 11. So every time you hear that word rapture, rapture is not a movie that God is planning. It's not a movie. <laughs> no, rapture is not a movie. It's not a movie. Bom. It's not a movie. Rapture simply is the resurrection. In fact, that is the way the Pauline theology describes the rapture. The resurrection of the believer, which is the blessed hope. Romans 8, 11 has it. If the spirit, put it up, put it up. That, that Romans 8, 11 is rapture. Put up Romans 8, 11. Thank you, Lord. But if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwelleth in you. That is, if you have the spirit, then you have the guarantee of the resurrection or the guarantee of the rapture. So the seal of the spirit is the guarantee that this body will put on immortality. So, I'm wondering how somebody with the Holy Spirit is praying not to miss the rapture. It makes no sense. I'm wondering how a child of God is busy praying that we may make it to heaven at last. Ah, ah. It's like a man praying that God will make him a man. You understand? 
a man. Praying, Father, make me a man. What are you now? What are you now? A man, woman? Or what are you? We are not praying to make heaven. We are not praying to make the rapture. The Holy Ghost inside the believer is the guarantee of rapture. Kabayada. If the spirit dwell in you, he shall quicken. He is the one that will quicken. And it's going to be in you forever. So he will quicken and still be with you. So it's not a prayer point. If any rapture happens and a believer is not there, it was not a rapture. Maybe it was a kidnapping to Bermuda Triangle. Because rapture will not leave any believer behind. Has any of you traveled with your leg at home? You traveled and left your leg at home. You are the body of Christ. Every believer is part of that body. So when rapture happens, the entire body will be gone. It's not a prayer point. It's guaranteed reality of the believer in Christ. Are we teaching good here? It's not a prayer point. It's not a fasting point. Oh, Jagabadaga. You have the Holy Spirit who is the guarantee for rapture. So, the Holy Ghost is the proof of God's ownership. Showing you that a new body is coming. That new body is what we call rapture. The resurrection is the way Brother Paul uses it. That's his terminology. Look at 2 Corinthians 1.22. 2 Corinthians 1.22. Mm -mm. Who hath also sealed us and given the earnest of the spirit in our hearts sealed us simply lets you know you are owned by god oh say with me very loud i came from god i am born of god now very loud i have his spirit i didn't hear a powerful amen john 3 34 john 3 34 for he whom god has sent speaketh the words of god for god given not the spirit by measure God does not give the spirit by measure. Every believer has the complete Holy Spirit at the point of salvation. At the point of salvation. And the substance that saved you is the same substance for ministry. The same substance of your salvation becomes your ministry. The spirit within and the spirit upon is the same spirit. So every believer is a potential minister of the gospel. Is just knowledge that he needs to feed on to bring out the functionality called ministry out of the reality called salvation. So that's why ministry is a fruit of spiritual growth. Ministry is a fruit of spiritual growth because every child of God is called. For those he foreknew, he predestinated. Those he predestinated, he called. Those he called, he justified. Those he justified, he glorified. There is ministry inside every believer. Every child of God has ministry. But it takes knowledge to bring it to functionality. Jesus gave the spirit. And he said the spirit is within you. Let me close with 1 Corinthians 12, 7. And I will shoot from there tomorrow. Are you enjoying this tonight? 1 Corinthians 12, verse 7. Mm -mm. Glory to God. 1 Corinthians 12, 7. But the manifestation of the spirit is given to every man to profit with all. Shut up. Say, I have the Holy Ghost within me. All right. Now, the manifestation of the spirit is given. The word manifestation is the word phenoresis or phenoru. It means to lay bare. It's like the word naked. That's a manifestation. So the Holy Spirit has been given to us and is given to us as manifestation. That is, everything of the Spirit has been laid bare to us. Feneru, manifestation, means to lay bare. That is, 
Nothing is taken away. Nothing is not seen. Or nothing is unknown. Say with me, I have the manifestation of the spirit. He says, giving to every man. And listen carefully. You can only have one manifestation. You can only have one manifestation. And after that manifestation, you have demonstration. In 1 Corinthians 12, 9 to 10, he now mentions nine gifts of the spirit. Nine. Look at 1 Corinthians 12, 11. But all these, all these nine gifts, work at that one and the self-same spirit, dividing to every man severally as the man wills not as the spirit wills as the man wills so when i will something the spirit gives me the ability to manifest it whether it's word of knowledge word of wisdom healing faith miracles As he wills means as he needs. As the believer needs. Some people say it's as the spirit wants. You have not read well. As he wills. And it's used in three portions. In Matthew 6, the miracle of bread. The disciples distributed the bread to each man as every man needed. That same word, as he wills. As each man needed. It's the same word used in Acts chapter 2. Distributed and gave every man as he needs. The church in Acts chapter 2. So it's as we need. The Holy Spirit has distributed himself to all of us as we need him. As we need him. So when he says, as he wills, as he wills is used for the receiver, not the giver. As the receiver wills, the spirit distributes. As the receiver wills, the spirit distributes. Are you in the building? Are you in the building? Yeah. When the need arises and you will, the spirit distributes to you the gift you need at that time. If it's healing that is needed by you, the spirit makes it available so you can use it to profit meeting the need. If it's miracles that is needed in the instance, the spirit makes it available so that you can serve the need. It's not whether the spirit wants or not. The spirit always wants but there must be a vessel that is willing to pull of the spirit and make it available. And that's where teaching comes. We will dive into it tomorrow and on Sunday. God punish the devil. Are you blessed tonight? Stand on your feet. Let's close this service. <laughs> Glory to God. Oh, hallelujah. Le grodo zokolo de brine he le mbo jakala na manga le grodo sukala da bebe bere ke deskataya a gobo jekele de brina na grodo sokolo de brina katolea le grodo zokolo de brina kakala de bambro na mondo golo no magene gene geli di balala bolo golo du bazaya na nengra do zokolo de brina kangle de mambronda dandele de bambro no mbronda zakala de brana kotoli le grodo zekele de brina kangle de baba le Baroto belita bababaya na granda zokolo do brina katolia la goroto sopa rakata minga lana manga lene mambo mambronda ganga la de bembronga dasa kile ne ma legro do zokolo do babra rapato pele de bembe hey glory to God Father we praise we bless we honor we appreciate and celebrate what the Holy Ghost is doing in us through us with us and we rejoice meradoba negara naga engere we have the solution to what the world is looking for. I am on 
Father, tonight I pray for everybody all over the world connected to this service. Whatever is not planted by God is rooted out. Sickness and disease be healed. Barriers terminated. Confusion ends. In the name of Jesus, solution and direction. Wherever you're hearing the sound of my ball, receive, 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 receive. In the name of Jesus. Receive the supply of the spirit. Oh, receive revelation knowledge. Your eyes are open to the things of the spirit. Your eyes are open to the things in the spirit. Where you need a miracle, receive a miracle. 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 In the name of Jesus. Hey, Shakaba Tobe. Lebrato saka mambrato tete. I put an end to that threat of death. I rebuke that oppression. I rebuke that infirmity. I rebuke that sickness. I rebuke that disease. Whatever is making noise around you, I command it to stop. I rebuke the storm. I speak peace. I speak solution. I speak direction. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Zubranto la kato bayato tolia takanto jakonda kato beli nangrando suprinanta tatolita pola taba egrede chocoluta bayana nengrando supreneka nangrado chocola da baba le bruda suka le degege crooked paths be made straight valleys be exalted mountains give way in the name of Jesus eh jatola taba. Thank you, Father, for answered prayer. Oh, praise the name of Jesus. Bless the name of Jesus. Bless the name of Jesus. The name that is above every name. Every knee bows and submits to the authority of the name. Major Tola Nabaha. Father, we give you praise tonight for answered prayer. In Jesus' precious name. And every believer says that amen on a note of finality. Oh, can we go ahead and celebrate? Celebrate, celebrate. Hey, glory. Something to see, something to hear. Go ahead and celebrate in this building. You know? Woo. Glory. Amen. Woo, I tell you, friends. When you grow in the knowledge of the supernatural. Now, listen carefully. The supernatural is taught. The supernatural is taught. The spirituals are taught. See? If you are not taught, you can never function. The spirituals are taught. Supernatural life has to be taught before you leave it. You have it, but if you don't know it, you can't leave it. So concerning spirituals, I will not have you ignorant. As I'm teaching, can you see how easy it is? They are taught. Things of the spirit, things in the spirit are taught. And that's why you stay with me. Huh? Stay with me. In a short while, you'll be more glad than you are tonight. That you stayed. Amen. Get out an offering. Let's give tonight as we celebrate Christ. You're watching on television, Facebook, YouTube. We're giving with joy tonight. We're giving with understanding. And we're giving sacrificially so that this good word of God can flood the nations as the water covers the sea. But listen very carefully. As we give tonight, I want to thank all of you that have been giving to us our new platform that we're acquiring. You know, I, I, I want to thank you because a lot of you are really, really seriously taking the matter serious just like I, I do. And I want to thank you for not, you know, playing with it. And I want to thank those of you that have done, those of you that are yet going to do and those of you that are already doing giving sacrificially towards that platform it will be our great celebration and our great joy to get that platform and reach more millions millions upon millions of homes all over africa the united kingdom and the parts of the world with that platform so i want to thank you for believing in the vision enough to give to the vision because what you don't believe in you don't give to you believe in a vision and the proof is not mouth the proof is in action you give because you believe in the vision and i want to thank you together we flood the earth with the fragrance of jesus christ lift your offerings 
of father we give in faith we give with joy our offerings are a sweet smell and as we give tonight we rejoice that everyone giving your needs are met supernaturally thank you for miracles released right now upon every giver and thank you for opportunities and favor working for us we thank you for the blessing tonight in jesus precious name and every believer says a powerful amen hallelujah i'm joining mr michael bush in the next few minutes or seconds rather and we'll answer your questions answer your calls respond to your emails it's going to be an exciting adventure get more people to hook up invite more friends to connect to this platform as we celebrate revelation knowledge as we celebrate solution and answers to questions you are raising tonight but it's a joy to be able to serve you the grace of god i look forward to joining you in the other segment and until then enjoy the grace of christ let's celebrate viewers around the world for being a part of this service tonight glory amen